In this lesson, we're going to cover some basic techniques on how to utilize surfaces to create models. I'm just in a brand new part file. I'm going to use the exact same tools that you would if you were to create a solid. So in this case, I'm just going to just draw a rectangle, place a couple dimensions on it. And then what I want to do is I want to go back and I want to extrude this out. So I'll exit out of the 2D sketch environment, click on extrude. But in this case, for the output, I'm going to change it to a surface. And you see I have the exact same parametrics. I could go back and tell it to be 20 millimeters in length. The only difference is, is that it's a surface. As you can see, there is no volume inside of it at this point. Now, the parametrics are going to be exactly the same here. So if I wanted to, I could come back down and maybe I want to apply a fillet between a couple of these edges. Go ahead and do that. And you see that everything here is in the browser as a feature. So I could again just go back, edit that feature. So there's no difference working with surfaces as you would with solids. So I can go back and make changes to that pretty easily. There are some other tools that we can use here. So for example, we can come back on down here and I'm looking for the extend surface tool. So in this case, I could come back, select a couple edges, extend them up, type in a value if I wanted to, or as you saw before, I could just select a certain edge if I needed to. We can also go down and create a boundary patch, and we'll move the dialog box over. So in this case, what I can do is I can select an area to create a boundary. So if I went back and turned that around, and also did a boundary patch on the back side here. Click Apply. I now have a closed boundary for a surface model. What I can do now is I can stitch all of these surfaces together. And as soon as I do that, you'll notice we now have a solid. There's also a tool here called Delete Face. So what Delete Face allows us to do is turn this back into a surface model. You'll notice the image right up here where it says part 9 showing that it right now is a surface. Let's go back and we'll spin our geometry around. I'm going to make this front plane the active sketch just to show that we can draw some extra geometry on there. So let's just draw on a spline. Create that. I'm going to extrude that spline as a surface. And let's flip, flip it around. And what I want to make sure is that that surface in this case is going to at least touch, if not go further than the other pieces of geometry here. So 30 millimeters definitely intersects and goes a little bit beyond on this opposite face. So the next tool I want to look at is going to be a trim surface. So again, from the part features panel, I'm going to click on the trim surface tool in this case. And the cutting tool is going to be our last surface we created. And for the remove, as you see, as I move my cursor, I'm defining which section of that model I'm going to remove. And in this case, I could come back down. I could turn off the visibility if I needed to of certain features. So let's go ahead and do that. So in this case, I'm going to turn off the visibility of that surface. I no longer need it. Let's just spin it around. What I'd like to do is give this a thickness. So from the part features panel, we're going to go ahead and we're going to thicken the model up. As you see, I can go back and define which distance this is going to go. And I'll go one millimeter to the inside. So I now took that surface model and gave it a thickness. As you see here, it's back to a solid model. The next file I'm going to work with is called replace face and it's basically a simple square that's been extruded. I'm going to make this front plane the active sketch and let's do a look at. And I'm just going to draw in a spline. Create that. Spin the geometry around. I'm going to exit out of that sketch. I'm going to create a second one. And what I'm going to show here, let's go back and also do a look at. And let's draw in another spline. 
So as we spin the geometry around, you see I have the splines on the opposite faces here. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to go ahead and click on the Loft tool, and I'm going to change the output to surface. I'm going to select my two splines. Go ahead and click OK. Now there's a couple things that we can do with that. The first operation I'm going to show you from the Part Features panel is we have a tool called Replace Face. So what I can do is I can take the top rectangular face and I'm going to replace it with the surface. Click OK. And you'll see that the contour has been changed to where it now meets that surface. I'm going to undo that and just show another operation. I'm going to make this top plane the active sketch. Of course you see that it automatically projected those edges forward for me. Click Return and I'm going to extrude that face, but in this case I'm going to use the two operation, select that surface, click OK. So in this case you see we got the exact same result. The last tool we're going to take a look at is going to be the Sculpt tool. So I'm going to open up the file called Sculpt Surfaces.ipt, found in your Chapter 8 Exercise folder, and in this model you'll notice that we have some existing surfaces and these surfaces right now are overlapping but if you would take them all put them together they're gonna form a closed body so from the part features panel we're gonna come on down and we're gonna select on the sculpt tool and simply I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna grab select all of the geometry and you notice as soon as I did that and it turned yellow that is telling me that we have enough information here to form a closed solid. So let's go ahead and click OK. And I now have a solid body. Inside of this model, I have another surface. I'm going to turn its visibility on. And what I want to do is I want to remove the material that where this surface actually intersects with the existing solid. So again, we're going to select on the Sculpt tool and the surface is going to be our new revolution here and in this case what I want to do is I want to remove material and I'll have a couple different operations here if I extend the dialog box down I can control which direction is going to be cutting so in this case if I switch it to the bottom click OK you'll see that it removed the material going in that direction let's go back and edit that sculpt And let's reverse the direction. So in this case, we can see that it's going up. I'm going to remove that material going up to now remove or spoon out, if you will, that geometry.